Oh, Professor Clements with you. Let's see what we can do to uh, understand motion graphs. We want to uh, be able to create a graph of velocity given a graph of uh, our displacement versus time, really kind of position versus time. Um, and so this is uh, dated material, but it still applies because we're talking about things that have uh, not changed hundreds of years. Um, so we have this graph and certain time intervals being marked. Notice that there are no numbers on the scales. Uh, for my purposes, you do not have to do any calculations of specific values. You're only going to be determining three things. Is the slope positive? Is it zero? Or is it negative? So our situation for calculating velocity is that we uh, will be looking at the slope of our position graph here. And as we see in this uh, first uh, time interval, the line is rising. A rising line has a positive slope. So there's some velocity. It's a straight line. So we have a constant velocity in this first time interval. In the next time interval, the object is uh, displaced more um, in a fixed amount of time. We've got a greater slope. It's a steeper line and the slope is larger. Slope is rise divided by run. So rise divided by run is a bigger number here. Again, it's a straight line, so it's a constant velocity. So I just draw on a uh, horizontal line here, constant velocity at a higher value compared to the first interval. Our third interval, the uh, slope is zero. So the velocity is zero. Uh, the object is not changing position, so the displacement is zero. Our final position minus initial position. So the velocity is zero. In this next time interval, we have a negative slope. That's a negative velocity. The object is moving uh, in the negative direction. So we have negative velocity. And then this curved area, you'd have to do a lot of slopes along here, but you would find that the slope is changing. The slope here is zero, and then it goes up and up and up. So we have a situation where the uh, velocity is coming back positive, and at one particular time the velocity is zero, when the slope down here is zero. Uh, on this uh, second graph over here, object's not moving, no displacement, so the velocity is zero in the first time interval. Then a negative slope, so we have a negative velocity. Another, we're at a fixed negative position here in this third time interval. If that's a fixed position, no displacement, no velocity. And then a positive slope, we have a positive velocity. Then the acceleration comes from looking at slopes on the velocity graph. So we have no slope here, the acceleration is zero. Then we have a little instantaneous burst of acceleration to bring us to this uh, second velocity. So I have just a short little blip up here. But once we get into this time interval, the velocity is constant, so the acceleration is zero. Then a negative blip of acceleration to bring the velocity down to zero. Again, zero acceleration. Then the velocity is going negative. That's a little negative blip of acceleration. Our velocity is uh, constant along here, zero acceleration. And then the velocity is rising from some negative value towards a positive. That's a positive acceleration. Uh, the graph over here of velocity versus time, not quite as interesting as uh, a lot of zeros. So object not moving, not changing velocity, acceleration is zero, a little negative blip of acceleration, then acceleration zero, a positive blip of acceleration to bring the velocity back to zero, and then zero acceleration, and then a positive blip of acceleration to give us a positive velocity and then a constant velocity from to the end of the motion and we have a zero value for acceleration. So the way we move on these graphs is by uh, just quickly uh, comprehending the slope, positive, zero, or negative, and how steep the slope is gives us a little change in drawing our graphs. So review the concept of slope, rise over run, we're rising a little bit here over this run. 
we're rising more over this run. So consequently, we get a uh, stronger velocity in the second interval. And we'll practice a little bit with this in class.